So this is a continuation of the test paper. Figure 8.1 shows a parallel wavefront of a light, light wave in ice. And that is moving in air. So when it moves from ice to air, the speed will increase. So the speed of the light in air is 3 exponent 8 and the refractive index is 1.3. On a figure, draw the wavefront as the light is passing into the air. Then draw an arrow to show the direction in which the wave is refracted and label the angle of incidence and angle of refraction. So whenever light is moving from, like, like this is a light ray, so it is moving from ice to air, so speed increases. So if the speed is increasing, like example, light is passing, light is passing, this is the direction in which the light is passing. So imaginary line, which is perpendicular to the surface, that that will be normal. So the line which is perpendicular to the surface, that is a normal. And moving from ice to air, the speed will increase. So if the speed increases, then it should bend away from the normal. So what will be the direction in which, if I continue, like this is a straight line, if it does not change the speed, but because speed increases, if speed decreases, it should bend towards the normal. But speed increases, so it will bend away from the normal. And then we have to draw the refracted wavefront. So how to draw the refracted wavefront? The direction of the wave and the wavefront should be 90 degrees. So this is the direction in which the wave is passing. So how we draw the refracted wavefront? So it should be 90 degrees or perpendicular like the angle between the direction of the wave and the wavefront should be 90 degrees. So this is one wavefront and then the other. And the wavefront in this medium will be parallel to each other. So So these wavefronts should be parallel to each other and perpendicular, all should be perpendicular or 90 degree to the direction of wave. So using a ruler, a protector, you will mark angle 90 and draw these wavefronts. So these are the, this is the direction of the wave, direction of the refracted wave, and these are the wavefronts. And we have to label the angle of incidence and angle of ref uh, refraction. So angle between the normal and the incident, that is angle of incidence. And angle between the normal and the refracted, that is angle of refraction. Then calculate the speed of a light in ice. So the formula for a refractive index When, which include the speeds, that is the speed of a light in air divided by speed of a light in medium. So the refractive index is given in the question that is 1.3. Speed of light in air is 3 to the dash power 8. Speed in a medium, we don't know. So V is equals to 3 to the dash power 8 divided by 1.3. So 3 exponent uh, 8 divided by 1.3, or you can also do 3 divided by 1.3. So it will be 2.3 into 10 to the power 8, the final answer. So when we have we are using a formula for a speed, it does not depend on whether it is moving from rarer to denser or denser to rarer. It is always speed of light in a vacuum divided or air divided by speed of light in a medium. But when angles are given, it depends on whether it is moving from denser to rarer or rarer to denser. You have to use different formulas for light. In question four, figure 6.1 represent the electromagnetic radiation. State uh, the radiation represented. So we have microwave, then we have uh, radio wave, microwave, then we have infrared, visible, the only part which we can see. Then we have UV, ultraviolet, then we have X-rays and then gamma. So A is IR, infrared, B is ultraviolet, C is X-ray and D is gamma. So you have to learn the order for electromagnetic radiations. 
Then the second part, the source emit a visible light. Figure 6.2 shows the light which is incident on phase X and Y. An angle of incidence is 35 and a refractive index is 1.5. Calculate angle of refraction. So here the light is in air and it is moving to glass. So when moving from air to glass, the angle, the refractive index equals sine angle I over sine angle R. So refractive index is 1.5. The angle of incidence, they mentioned 35. So this will be sine 35. And angle of refraction, we don't know. So we will solve that refractive index equals sine angle I. Why sine angle I over sine angle I? This is a formula when it is moving from air to glass or air to water. So refractive index is given 1.5. The angle of incidence was 35. And sine R, we don't know. We cross multiply, so sine R equals sine 35 divided by 1.5. So it will be sine 35. It will be sine 35. An angle, remember, should always be in degrees. So it will be sine 35, divide, which is 0.573 divided by 1.5, which is equals to 0.3, uh, 328, 382. So it means sine R equals 0.382. But we need R here. So R is equals to sine inverse 0 0.382. So you'll press shift on your calculator or inverse of sine and the final answer that is equal to 22.48. So the angle of refraction should be 22.48 degrees. So this final answer when we solve this should be 22.48. Then on the figure, we have to complete a path for the red and then we have to complete a path for blue and label red as R and blue as B. So red, if the red light enter, it will bend. It will first bend towards the normal and then moving from glass to air, it will bend away from normal. That will be, we will label that as red. But if blue enter, blue will bend more than red so when we show there will be a greater deviation for blue light when it enters with the same angle and then further it bent. So this will be the blue light. So, and if there was a violet, then violet will bends the most and red bends the least. So, but we don't have to, we just have to complete for a blue and a red light. In question five, the speed of a light in air is three exponent eight and the refractive index is 1.33. What is the speed of a light in water? So formula, whenever speeds are involved, the refractive index is speed of light in air divided by speed of light in medium. So refractive index is 1.33. Speed of light in a medium is three into 10 power eight divided by V or V is equals to three into 10 power eight divided by 1.33. So 3 into 10 to the power 8, 3 exponent 8, divided by 1.33. That will be same like there was a previous answer of 2.3 exponent 8. So we'll get 2.3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. In part B, figure shows a parallel wavefront in air enter a so this is a light. When light travels from air to a medium, it slows down. So we have to draw the wavefront arrow to show the direction of the refracted ray and a level angle of refraction as well. So first, we'll continue this arrow. We'll continue this direction to show the direction of the incident. Then the imaginary line, which is perpendicular to the surface, we'll draw that as a normal. 
moving from air to plastic, the light will slow down. So as it slow down, it if it does not change the direction, it should pass straight. If it increases in speed, it will bend away from normal. But because moving from air to glass, it decreases the speed, so it will bend towards the normal. And then we draw the refracted wavefronts. Direction of the refracted wavefront, remember, should always be perpendicular to direction of the wave. So if the, the black arrow is representing a direction of the wave. So the refracted wavefronts, wavefronts I'm representing by a blue lines, and they should be parallel to each other in the medium and should be 90 degree or perpendicular to the wave. And we have to label the angle of the refraction. So the angle of refraction is the angle between the normal and the refracted. If they say label angle of incidence, then angle between the incident and the normal is angle of incidence. In section six, figure 7.1 shows an object and its image formed by a converging lens. What are the characteristic of this image? When you see it appear inverted, it is not diminished, diminished means small. Yeah, it, when you compare the height, yes, it looks diminished, a bit smaller in size. Not enlarged, inverted, that's two, and it is real. So, it diminished here refers to size. When you compare the size of object with size of image, so it appeared to be smaller. That's why we uh, take diminish. On figure 7.1, draw a ray passing through the focus of a lens from tip of object and to the image. So one ray of a light should be passing through the focus and it should go parallel. So how we can locate that, it is easy to locate. Like example, as we know, it should go parallel. So it should be here and coming from the lens. So then this point, we will label this point as a focus. Then the focal length we have to label on the so on the focal length we have to label focal length is actually a distance from the focus to the center of the lens. So this distance from the focus till the center of the lens we call that as focal length. Then draw another ray not passing through the principal focus. So what could be another ray which is not passing through a principal focus? So we can take a parallel light ray, a parallel light ray to the principal axis and or we can, because they, we don't want it to pass through focus, so we can take any other ray with an angle, but all should meet at the same point. So any ray, any at any angle you can take, but it should meet a point or the tip of the image. In question seven, figure 6.1 represent a wave uh, form of a sound, which is traveling at a constant speed. On a figure level with letter X, the distance correspond to amplitude. Amplitude refers to height of the wave, so this is the amplitude. With letter Y, mark the distance of wavelength. Distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs or like from one crest to another, that is the wavelength or length of one wave. Like this is one complete wave, one complete crest and one complete trough. That is also wavelength. Then state ha what happened to amplitude and the wavelength if the loudness of a sound increases at a constant pitch. So loudness is affected by amplitude. So if a loudness increase, the so amplitude will increase. But frequency, if the frequency is not changing, 
because when a wave, as a pitch is not changing, if a pitch does not change, the frequency does not change. And if the frequency does not change, so what will happen to the wavelength? The wavelength will remain same, constant. But the second part, the pitch of a sound increase with a constant loudness. Loudness is not changing. So amplitude will be same. But what happened to wavelength if pitch is increased? Pitch is a frequency. What is the relation between frequency and wavelength? They're inverse because we have the formula V equal F lambda. So V over lambda is equals to F. So if speed is constant for a wave, if the frequency increases, the wavelength should get shorter. So the wavelength will decrease. Because the pitch is increasing, frequency is increasing, so the wavelength should decrease. Then a ship uses a pulse of a sound to measure a depth it receives after 54 millisecond. 54 millisecond, we have to convert into second. So 54 divided by 1000, it will be 0 0.054. Or you can also say 54 into 10 power minus 3 of second. And the speed in water, 1500. We need a depth whenever there's an echo, as I mentioned, the pulse transmitted and then echo is there. So speed is 2D divided by T. So distance will be speed multiplied by time divided by two. So speed, it is 1,500. The time is 0 0.054 and divided by two. So this will give us the depth, which is about 44.7 or eight which is approximately 40.8, which is approximately equals to 41. So you have to convert the time into second here, millisecond must be in seconds. In question eight, what is meant by total internal reflection? The definition of a total internal reflection, when a light travel back or bounce back in a same denser medium, When the light reflects back in same dense medium, we call that as total return reflection. And what is the critical angle? The angle of incidence is known as a critical angle. When angle of refraction is Ninety as a light travel from from denser to rarer medium. We have to learn the two definitions: total return reflection as well as the definition for critical angle. Then figure 7.1 show a ray of a light incident on a glass. The speed of the light is 3 exponent 8. What is the refractive index? And so we have the speed in a medium. The formula refractive index is equals to 3 into 10 power 8. The speed in a medium divided by V. The speed of light in air divided by speed of light in medium. So 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 2 into 10 power 8 equal to 1.5. And remember, refractive index does not have any unit because it is a ratio of the speed or the angles. That's why it does not have, it's a ratio only, so no. It's... Then figure 6.1 is a full scale diagram. On a figure mark two point, the center of uh, compression. So compression region where the particles are closer to each other. So this is one compression and this is another compression. Then the speed of the sound is 330. Measurement from the diagram and determine the sound, the frequency. So measurement, you, you will use your ruler scale. You will measure the distance between the two successive crest, the two successive compression, because the distance between the two successive compression that is equals to wavelength. So from one compression to another, this you have to measure this distance. That will be in centimeter. 
So example, if I say five centimeter, but we should always use in meters. It can be any number, just example, I'm saying it's five centimeter according to the paper size. So we convert into meter, divide by 100, so 0 0.05 meter. So we got the wavelength and we have the speed. So we need a frequency. So formula speed is frequency into wavelength. Speed is 330. Frequency we don't know and the wavelength is 0 0.05. So it will be 330 divided by 0 0.05. That will give us the frequency So 330 divided by 0 0.05 equals to 16 point divided by 0 0.05, 6,600 hertz. But it depends on your this value. Like I'm just taking as a five, but you will use your ruler scale and measure this distance to work out the wavelength. So this was the test related to block three.